You are listening to Hello Cupcake, It's Me, a podcast with your host, Michael Peterson. Hey everyone, Michael here with It's Me, a podcast, and today is October 3rd, 2024, and thanks for hanging with me. If you haven't done so already, please hit like and subscribe, then head on over to youtube.com slash hello cupcake it's me to check out the youtube channel that is updated every wednesday and saturday then head on over to hello cupcake it's me.com to check out the blog and then make sure that you head on over to check out my upcoming book carpe diem scroto 365 daily affirmations coming November 2024 and make sure that you follow all the different socials and the links are down below so how the hell is everyone doing I am still battling with low-grade depression and being uh, rather upset with how things are going in my life right now and just you know, everything kind of in between. Um, stressed out about finances as per usual, and the fact that, you know, we're going into the holiday seasons. We're now three months before Christmas, or two months, depending on your point of view. And uh, holiday seasons are always really just full of stress and everything else so um yeah but here we are just doing the best we can with what we have available to us right uh so monday started off with a huge fucking bang um i was all set to go and do um another cold plunge with a friend of mine and I go to get in my car and it would not start. Just roll, 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 roll. I was like, God damn it. Like, I started thinking about everything that possibly could be going wrong with it. Like, did I by chance happen to leave the door open and it drained the battery overnight? What was going on with it? But, you know, in all honesty and fairness, the, the battery has been having trouble starting since I got the spark plugs and ignition coil replaced. And also to be fair to the car, it's 17 years old, has 133,000 miles on it. And God only knows when or if the battery has ever been changed in that whole time period. And... I have jump started a lot of different cars and um so who knows you know the, the battery lasted a good long time uh the biggest kick to the balls was the fact that it cost me a little over 230 dollars for the battery it wasn't the cheapest battery but it wasn't the most expensive one either like the cheapest battery was like 80 dollars but it seriously looked like one of those little car batteries like you would buy at walmart for your kids and i didn't want to buy a 79 dollar battery just to turn around and in a year or two have to buy another 79 dollar battery or whatever else and this battery did come with a two-year limited warranty. However, I don't know what the hell the limited warranty actually covers or whatever. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. So, that was money that I honestly did not have planned to spend this, uh, this month. I already started the month like $90 in the hole. And so to have this additional 200 and something dollars hit me, that put me at like 311.79. Plus, um, I have to spend an additional $25 because GoDaddy fucking sucks. And 
my domain that originally cost me a dollar ninety nine for the first like three years is now up at twenty four something after taxes and I can fees and whatever other bullshit that they want to throw at it and like add on taxes and fees and regulatory BS that probably doesn't even exist but because you know no one really knows internet law but whatever so all of that aside I am working at still obtaining the goals that I have set um I'm also started to identify the fact that I am going through a mourning period right now with some of the things that have happened in my life and um, just like the stuff that's going on with my biological mother. Um, she called me the other day and told me that the doctors told her that she was going on hospice care and that she had four to six months to live. I talked to her social worker and her social worker said that she has no idea where the four to six month thing came from, that that was never discussed at the doctor's appointment, and that she was given a nurse who will come in and help her for like 30 hours a week or a month or something like that. And is going to be doing physical therapy and whatever else with her. I said, okay, that sounds more, you know, more probable. Um, I worked as a home caregiver where I live with the client three days during the week. And then I had two days off. So it was, um, and I've also worked as a hospice care nurse where they come in and just make you as comfortable as possible until you pass away. And I, you know, I don't foresee her needing a hospice nurse as she describes it. Um, but, you know, whatever. Um, still dealing with a lot of her just the bullshit that she's going through right now and how it's all just kind of fallen on me over the last few years and having to parent a parent who's never parented and you know all that other stuff that I've covered in both the YouTube and um, previous episodes so anyways um, dealing with that dealing with uh, friendship drama dealing with trying to get the book situated and finalized and figured out trying to just make sense of everything else in my life right now and just having a hard time with it and I don't know if you all follow along with astrology or any of that other stuff but like basically it's back to back mercury retrograde type energy where everything is getting fucked up everything is getting just thrown to the wind and shit is hitting the fan for everything so that aside though you know um i know that people have it a hell of a lot worse than what i do especially with uh, the hurricane that just came through and devastated um, the southeast coast of America. And, you know, my heart goes out to those people because I have friends and family who live in Florida, Georgia, North Carolina, and South Carolina. And um, I even have a friend who lives... um, She's either in Maryland or in Virginia. I know she used to live in Maryland, but she recently moved with her husband. So I don't know if that was down to Virginia or somewhere there in Maryland. But still, you know, that whole section of the East Coast is kind of getting it a little rough right now. And then I have um, family who lives up in Illinois and our, um, I'm sorry, Indiana and I have friends that live in Michigan that are getting the residual winds and all that other stuff because it's sweeping across 
and causing problems for them, albeit no, not like the hurricane hitting um, those affected areas. And I just absolutely love how people can politicize tragedy. Like, you know, shut the fuck up about red versus blue, me versus you, us versus them. Like, how about you just come together as neighbors and try to help each other out? <clears throat> like, one, I'm having an online argument with someone right now about, um, he had posted about the hurricane and how he doesn't know what he's going to do when the gas runs out for his generator that he might have to go out and steal some or whatever. And I'm just like, so you're going to victimize other victims to try to keep your self and your small group of people like comfortable instead of coming together as a community and working together and pooling y'all's resources you're gonna go commit crimes and possibly injure other people all for the sake of your own comfort and i know a lot of us think that you know we would probably do the same thing and looking at tv shows like the walking dead for instance yeah you know you do pull together and you create these communities and compounds or whatever and you do everything you can to make the compound successful but you know at the end of the day your resources are a target for everyone else so if you are con if you're creating a community and you're helping people within the community then you are no longer a target you're an asset and when you become an asset others fight to protect you when you become a target others fight to defeat you and we forget that we are a part of a community, not a part from a community. So, I don't know. Like I said, though, my heart goes out to those people affected by that because having lived through a natural disaster where I lost everything in a damn, like, damn near instantaneously and being homeless, um, I, I understand. Now, you know, we didn't have to deal with floods, but we had to deal with the fact that the fire took out half of our town and stupid people with their greed and everything raised the rent prices from like five and six hundred dollars to twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen hundred dollars. And it's like, you know, fuck you. There is a special place in hell. And everyone's like, well, you know, it's uh, supply and demand, blah, blah, blah. You, fuck you and your supply and demand. Like, until you live through it, until you are victimized by something that is outside of your control, then you do not understand and you don't have a right to speak on it and you know i used to be one of those people that was just like that whole like get a job bum type of a person but it took me having to go through the shit myself to realize that Everything I have, everything that I own can be gone in an instant. And all the money that you have saved up, all of the, like, whatever you got in the bank, that goes away really freaking quickly when you are living hand to mouth, living out of a car, living in hotel rooms or whatever else. Because you are trying to maintain a level of comfort that you are used to and because you've just experienced something traumatic you are also comforting yourself 
And so you spend that money really freaking quick. And um, yeah, you know, I went from being a label whore where everything head to toe had to be label. It had to be current. It had to be like fashionable, the whole nine yards to, I don't care if the t-shirt that I'm wearing has a hole in it and a stain and my shoes are like some Walmart brand. As long as I'm clothed, as long as I'm warm, as long as I am, you know, taken care of in the basic, in the b- most basic sense of the word, then awesome. Now, does that mean that I walk around looking completely trashed all the time? No, I do take care of my appearance but I don't have to wear labels anymore. I don't have to make sure that I have that Southern California swag and that look about me where you perpetuate like this lifestyle image. And, you know, it's the follies of youth also. So, I just... I don't, I don't know what the answer is, but I try to think of the community more so than just my own personal needs. And um, I guess that comes with growth and development. And so many of us have, you know, <laughs> so many people in America only have the culture that is growing between their toes and nothing more and it's just like everyone has such a narrow-minded view of what is important but whatever so yeah um sorry about that little tangent it's just something that is weighing kind of heavily on my heart right now that um you know like everything else that's going on this is just giving me something new to focus on and just kind of like gripe about i guess but anyways guys it's been a very long day i actually took some time today and i went out into the forest and i meditated And it felt so good just to get out into the middle of the forest and sit there and just talk to the trees. I know that sounds stupid, crazy, new age, like hippie tree hugging or whatever, but I'm at such peace when I'm out in the forest, surrounded by nature and like just kind of cut off from the human senses of like hearing the world like you don't hear any cars driving by you don't hear the noise of the neighborhood you don't hear sirens you don't hear anything you just hear the ebb and flow of the wind moving through the trees literally the earth breathing and you hear all the sounds that the forest make, the trees creaking, the chipmunks and other wildlife scurrying through the bushes, the birds singing and chirping, and that musty, earthy smell. And right now in the Pacific Northwest, all of the mushrooms are starting to grow and pop up. So you have just that earthy... um, wet basement mushroom smell that is just therapeutic as hell and i was out i was out there for probably a good hour or so just sitting on my favorite tree stump and just taking it all in and i made a youtube video about it and i also made a um tiktok video about it but it was just nice to feel the sun like touching my skin as it was coming through the canopy 
and just sitting there and listening to all of the movement of the forest. There was something probably, I don't know, 200 yards away from me with a very heavy footstep, um, breaking branches as it was walking. And, you know, God only knows what that was. It could have been a deer or cougar or who knows, but, um, I didn't ever feel like I was in danger. Um, I felt eyes on me, like something was watching me, but I didn't feel like I was in danger. And living here in the Pacific Northwest and being in the forest, um, you are very much on the food chain. And so, yeah, something is watching you. <laughs> um, and there are a lot of wild... Um, there's a lot of wildlife around me. There's elk, there's deer, there's mountain lion, there's cougar, there's coyote, there's uh, raccoons and possums and everything in between. So, you know, any number of creatures could have been watching me. But, you know, I just, I felt at home, I felt at ease, and I felt peace peace that I haven't had for a very long time and as I was leaving the forest and getting back into my car and driving home I just kind of felt like a, a rubber band being stretched again and the minute I walked back into my house like all that anxiety and anxious energy and stuff came over me again and I was just like you know it's got to be something in this house so maybe I need to get a young priest and an old priest and have them come through and like <laughs> bless my house or something I don't know but um it's it's a reoccurring theme that I put throughout the book about disconnecting to reconnect and just taking time to have time for yourself and that was the best form of therapy that I could have given myself and I think that doing that at least once a week and also maybe doing the cold plunges and going swimming and stuff like that is going to have to be what gets me through the next couple of weeks and months um because my seasonal affective depression is kicking my ass right now and it's affecting everyone that i know so i don't know we just gotta wish each other luck right guys so anyways i am going to let you go Thank you for listening this far if you've done so. And please stay tuned for... Hey everyone, did you know that there is a new exciting book coming out by the aspiring author Michael Peterson called Carpe Diem Scroto 365 Daily Affirmations? This book is a daily affirmation workbook that has mental health writing prompts to help you navigate your day better. With funny and witty plain English humor, you will find prompts that ask you things like talk about a time that you needed support and didn't have it. What did you do to support yourself and what tips and suggestions would you have for others who may be going through something similar? Each day, the affirmations help to reframe things so that you can get the best out of your day. And at the end of the day, there is a journaling section to write about the day's exploits. If you would like to learn more about this fabulous book, please visit the website www.cdsthebook.com Again that website is www.cdsthebook.com if you have a podcast, radio show, or would like to book Michael for an engagement, or have him on your show, please send an email to cdsbook at gmail.com or look for the media kit and other booking information on the website. Thank you so much for tuning in. You have been listening to Hello Cupcake, It's Me, a podcast with your host, Michael Peterson. Please make sure to check back often as new episodes are released bi-weekly. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please feel free to send a message to hellocupcakeitsme at gmail.com. 
And until next time, stay happy, safe, and keep doing the best you can with what you have been given.